Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to take a look in on the European night crawlers. And this half of the European night crawler uh, Eurozone, as I call it, is, uh, has been started from 500 cocoons from the crazy worm lady back in 2019. And then over here is the one pound of adult ENCs that I got from Gatano at Northeast Worms. Both of these bins were started in July of 2021. Let's take a look at them. Let me put you down and we'll take a peek. First things first, I think I have another visitor in the wormery. Seems to be a hole there and a hole there. So if this is the feeding end, whatever it is must have been interested in the fruit that I had down here. So we're gonna have to perhaps get the traps going again. All right, let me get you sat down and we'll look at the old end. Look at this guy. What is he doing? Lights are on. All right, so let, let's take a look here. Um, the top part does look a bit dry. And by a bit, I mean super dry. So let me get things moved over and we'll look and see right there, not even an inch, uh, then everything starts looking good again. So that uh, old lid that I had put on top there seems to be doing the trick. And I think we just need to start moving things over. Somebody had asked me, how does this wedge system work? Most of the time what I'm doing is I'm taking the stuff that is reasonably finished and then I'm stacking it up. And then that leaves room at that end down there for me to scoot everything over. So that's what we're going to do right now. Look, they are getting some good size on them. So the idea is to keep the almost finished stuff together and then keep the items that are more in progress together. So I'm just digging out kind of a, a dividing line here to where I think that this stuff right here is probably the most complete. Now it is down to 62 degrees in the basement. We've had quite the cold snap. It's been you know, about 10 degrees below freezing for about a week now. So I think they're all starting to slow down a bit. All right, let's uh, take a look at the leading edge. Okay, so I'm going to basically take the dry parts that are going to need rehydrated here, scoot them down, and then I'm going to start looking at this end. I think that the worms are picking up size now that they're in this larger bin. They had been in a, a 10 gallon for a good long time. So I think they are picking up some size being in this larger bin. So that's good. That makes me happy. Okay, we're still running into that box we used to start the bin with. So any sort of uh, waxed cardboard does take a long time to get eaten. I know people ask, like, do you put it in there and, you know, why if it takes so long? Well, I'm not on a schedule. The worms don't seem to care. Yeah, they're pretty, pretty slow right now. But this is definitely less done than the stuff we were looking at before. All right, let me move you forward a bit. Okay, so this is the leading end. I didn't look at the video, but I think we skipped feeding these guys because they hadn't finished their pumpkin from before. So I'm willing to bet they're really going to want a feeding this time. And they probably have made quite a bit of progress on the bedding because there wasn't anything else for them to eat once they finished that pumpkin. But I do try and err on the side of caution. I see a tiny bit of that pumpkin left there. Good population of worms. I think we started with two and a half pounds in July after we did the water harvest. 
and uh, I'm willing to bet there is definitely more than two and a half pounds in here now. I mean, if you just look at the, you know, the amount of babies in here, we definitely have a lot of babies. One of the things that I was reading in the books that I've picked up recently was that one of the reasons we see an explosion of babies come spring or when it warms up uh, in your area that it's because a lot of the cocoons go somewhat dormant in the cold weather and then when it finally gets to the temperature that they like then they all hatch at the same time. So you might have some that are that are tougher than others that you know they they hatch even though it's cold but then the majority of them will all hatch at the same time once the soil reaches a certain temperature. Let's see, and I also learned that the shiny purple, let me find a worm who's doing it. So the shiny, where you sometimes see shiny purple, that that's actually the mucus um, on the worm that is causing that, that kind of iridescent color. Uh, that's more, you see more of it in the blue worms and the African night crawlers. Now I have been keeping an eye on the moisture in here. So even though the furnace has been non-stop, I think it's doing pretty good here, at least on the deeper levels. So I'm going to flip that dry stuff under. And then I think that is a good place for us to put our new feeding today. So our moisture is good. Uh, I don't see any pests in here at all. I don't even see any springtails really, which is weird. Usually you see an, an uptick in springtails in the cool time of the year. But I don't even see those. In fact, I'm not even seeing any roly-polies right now. Everybody's sleeping but the worms. All right, let's get them some food. I think they're going to get tired of pumpkin. And let me get them some bedding. This has been resting for a little over a week. I'm going to cover that up with some of the drier bedding. There we go. And let me pick you up and then I'll show you what it looks like now. All right. So here we go with the um, cocoon side uh, that was started with the 500 cocoons. You've got the stuff that is very much finished or getting close to being finished and then you have the new stuff and then you have the empty part that's waiting for the next time that we can add more stuff. I'm gonna put this lid back on here and that will keep in some of the moisture. Alright, let's go get set up on the northeast bin side. Okay, so here is our northeast worms side of the Eurozone. Now this bin I had lower expectations of because it, it did only have one pound of worms and they were adults uh, back in July. So I've had lower expectations but they are of course exceeding my expectations. So let me put you down and we will look at the old end. Yep. And again we still have you know the dry part on top even though I've got that lid that's been sitting on the top I still do get the top inch or so that's that's pretty dry. Look at them, aren't they pretty? So this is the side that has got is the oldest. So this is the end we expect to be more finished. And it is. Definitely looks like it's pretty close to being some nice good castings for me. I started, uh, <clears throat> uh, I've ordered some figs. I can't just help myself, you know. It's like every time I find them, I need to pick them out and look at them. Um, but I've ordered some fig cuttings. Got my first one in and planted that today. So, whoa, worm quake. <clears throat> so that is in progress right now. I used a 50-50 mixture of coconut coir and vermiculite and then on top of that then I added you know a couple handfuls of worm castings. Just love these guys. 
All right, so let me scooch over so we can see the middle. I'm moving the, the dry stuff over here so we can get that re-moisturized. So the middle should be where there should be some food. It's definitely seeing some, some more worms here. And seeing some sticks, which should go to this end. It's feeling a little compacted, but they certainly are breeding. Got some medium sized worms in here. Got a nice cocoon there. So, like I was saying with the other bin, uh, many of the Cocoons are probably waiting for the soil to get a bit warmer. Let's see. Here's the ginger that we put in last time. It still feels kind of firm. You can smell the ginger. There's quite a bit of it. Let's see. Still firm. Not sure if it's gonna grow or anything. It was pretty pretty slimy when I put it in there. I'm not seeing any other food though. I'm just gonna keep taking anything big and putting it to the end. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna start scooting this stuff back. As per the wedge method, we need to make room. Not sure what that is. It's hard to tell when things don't smell like anything and you can't tell what they look like visually. Ah, wait a minute. I think we have a potato. Aha. Because I think that smelled terrible. So good worms for taking care of that stinky potato. Okay, I'm going to move you over and we'll look at the business end. Okay, I'm just going to keep moving things over. We found that potato. We found, let's see, another potato. Found the ginger. Looks like we're going to find quite a bit of that potato. Potatoes do take a long time. These weren't frozen, but they were mostly rotten. So it looks like these guys probably aren't going to get much of a feeding because they've still got quite a bit of food left. More ginger. More ginger. So yeah, it is a little compacted down here. Let's see. Just trying to make sure we can consolidate all the food into one place. Another thing that I found that was trivia in the uh, books was that worms that have been eating really, really well will be darker, richer color, and the worms that have not been eating really well will be lighter in color. I guess that makes sense. Wow. And they also said that the bigger the worm, the bigger the cocoon. And look at the size of that thing. That is a big cocoon. There are some big worms in here. But then again, there also are their offsprings, which are not very big. So they are still making a lot of cocoons here. And if the color business is anything to be an indicating, you know, some of them are eating quite a bit or doing a really good job. Another thing I found out, and I'll just pick up this big worm as an example, but they said that worms, when they get old, go through a process called senescence, where they actually, once they get close to the end of their life, they actually lose their clitellum, and just like it was when it was a juvenile. And when they lose the clitellum, then even though they will be adult size, 
they will uh, no longer be capable of breeding. This guy looks like he's still a breeder. Good job, worm. I don't think I've ever noticed a big worm that didn't have a clitellum on it, but uh, if you have, put that in the comments below. I would find that very interesting if somebody would post a picture of that. Looks like the onion's still trying to grow. But let me put some bedding down here in this ditch that I've created, and then we'll put the old food and see if it looks like we need any more. And as you can tell, I put the grit in with my my bedding. So this is going to be a ginger potato stew for the for the worms. That's all I see right now is ginger and potatoes. And they've got quite a bit left. So I don't think they really need any food today. I'll flip through the end here. There's a potato that looks like there's really nothing wrong with it. Okay. There's our big old worm. All right, let's stand back and look and see what we've got. All right, so there we go with the uh, northeast side. This side does not look as done as the, the other one, uh, but you can definitely tell this is the new side, and there's the empty side that is waiting for the time that it will be part of the project as well. Uh, these worms do have their own playlist, and I can link that below. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.